What's going on, you guys? Welcome to Freedom Life Church. My name is Jana. And I'm Delisa. And we are on our second week <laughs> of our series, The Unseen. Unseen. Yes. Uh, we're happy to announce some of the events we have going on. Right. One of the things is prayer call. Um, every day. It's going to be every day, yeah, from <laughs> October 23rd to the 27th. So make sure you hop online for that. What time? Uh, 7 p.m. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. If it's 7 p.m., you won't hear faster. <laughs> he might, he, no, he won't be asleep. He's not. He's It'll gonna be, be over. Just awake. get there. Anyway, <laughs> so we have a special guest on October 29th, Bill Weiss. He's gonna do um, his testimony of his 23 minutes mm -hmm. he spent in hell. It's yeah. gonna be amazing. We're gonna have three services. It's gonna be at 9 a.m., 10:30 a.m., and 12, 12 p.m. Yeah. So, so make sure you try to catch one of those services. Right. It's gonna be so so powerful as well. That Sunday after the third service, we are going to have life Let's group equip. Yes, that's something you sign up for online, correct? Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Also, <laughs> we do have um, growth track step, step one step one coming up as on well. November 5th. So yeah. you can also register for that online. We love when you register. You are the best. <laughs> we yeah. do that. Same. We also listen if you don't. <laughs> exactly. Also, November 5th, same day as Growth Track, we do have water, water baptisms baptism. coming up. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, rededication, yes. salvation, right. you can go online and sign up if you want to take that next step. Exactly. And we also have, on November 19th, child dedication. Yeah. So this is a good opportunity for those mamas and dadas who just had their babies or their <laughs> children are, you know, they're, they could be me, like 30 years old, and get dedicated for the Lord. You can sign up online and also register for that early. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else we have going on? We have Wednesday night uh, for 12 a.m and also prayer nights. That one's gonna be at 7 p.m., yes, not 7 a.m. Not 7 a.m. <laughs> if you come here at 7 a.m., we might not even be here either yeah. on Wednesday. So you can find more information for everything we just talked about online. That's where you can register. I guess I'm praying. I'm praying. Yeah, Delisa's yeah, gonna pray. I'm praying. Yes, we're praying. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, God. We know that you're gonna move in ways that we can't even fathom, Father. For you are faithful and you are good. We know your presence is here, Lord, and we just can't wait to see what you're gonna do. We praise your holy name, Jesus, and we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, go around, say hi to somebody you don't know, you do know, give them a high five, a hug. High five. High ten. High ten. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Bye. <laughs>
is the day that you made, and I will rejoice and be glad, rejoice and be glad in it. And this is where I believe that you are more than enough, you're more than enough for me. You are faithful to your promise. You are strong when I am weak. When I'm standing in your presence, I have everything I need. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's more than a feeling. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. My soul, bless his name, all that is within me say, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I've got the Lord. Jesus, come what may. To your promise, you are strong when I am weak. When I'm standing in your presence, I have everything I need. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, yes! The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul.
out the joy. Hallelujah. We thank you for the joy. Thank you for the strength in the joy, Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy for you each morning. There is joy even in the morning. There may be pain at night, but my joy comes in the morning. There may be pain at night, but my joy comes in the morning. There may be pain at night, but my joy comes in the morning. There may be pain at night, but my joy comes in the morning. May be pain at night, but my joy comes in the morning. There may be pain at night, but my joy comes. Come on, lift that up, church. There may be pain at night, but my joy comes in the morning. There may be pain. But my joy, come on, there may be pain, there may be pain at night, but my joy comes in the morning, there may be pain at night, but my joy comes in the morning, there may be pain at night, but my joy comes in God of my present, God of my future, you write my story, you hold it all together. God of my present, God of my future, you write my story. Come on, lift it up. You hold it all.
Just call upon the Holy Spirit. Call upon the Holy Spirit. Right where you are, just begin to open up your mouth. Come on, let it rise up like incense to the Lord. Let it rise up like an aroma. Let it rise up like incense to the Lord. Let your praise rise. For he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. That's why he's worthy. Oh, you are so worthy. Lift him up, lift him up. Come on, call upon the help. Hold it all together. You hold it all together. Even when I feel like the world is falling apart, Jesus, you hold it all together. You are the ruler, Alpha and Omega, author of salvation. You hold it all together. You are Elohim. You are El Shaddai. You are my peace, Lord. You hold it all. I give myself to you, every last part of oh Jesus. You hold it, you hold it all together. You hold it all together, Jesus. Say, I'm not enough, come on. Can we lift this up and say, I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? I'm not enough. I'm not enough unless you come. You meet me here again. He meets you right where you are. You can worship, you can worship right where you are. 
may you be praised above every name. these things for you today, says the Spirit of Grace, that will empower you to grow and to change and to increase in me. Because as I increase in your life, you'll see that then you'll be all that I've called you to be. But you must allow me to remove those things that would be of selfishness and strife and pride, the things that put you in the forefront. Allow me to cause those things to decrease and even die in your life. And then allow me to be what I am in you so that I can be it through you in the earth. And I will increase and you will be a display of my glory. And you will be a display of my person. And you will be a display of who I am in the earth. So allow me to work that work of grace in you today. Allow me to work that work whereby things are removed out of your life that have been such a hindrance, that have stood in your way of really being all that you know that you're supposed to be in me. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And so as the spirit of grace comes with the word and the anointing, receive it and allow me to work in you through that work of repentance and change so that transformation comes in your life today. For you've so desired to be so much more, to demonstrate so much more of me, but you must, your flesh, your soul, much decrease so that I can increase. So yield to the process today. Go ahead and let go of this thing and let go of that thing and this that has had you bound and this has been in your way and put it at the altar, says the Spirit of Grace. And allow the fire of my spirit consume it today. For I will do something brand new in you. And I want to do something like you've never seen before through you. For I want to demonstrate who I am in your life and through your life. And let it start today. Let it begin in this house today. Let it begin in this service today. As you yield your complete being over to me says the Spirit of Grace. Hallelujah. Sing that again. Come on. Sing. May you increase and as we decrease may you be praised above every name and may you increase and as we decrease Sing it out. Thank you.
you so much. Well, welcome everyone to Freedom Life Church. How y'all feeling? It's Sunday. Well, welcome everyone here at Freedom Life Church. We're experiencing freedom in our everyday lives. And I just want to give a big shout out to all of our guests that are in the room. Let's give it up to all of our guests. Woo-woo. Woo-woo. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. This is your first time here. It's your second time here. We're glad you are here. We want to help you get connected. We've got actually a very nice gift, which actually, oh, here we go. I brought it up here for you. Ta-da! And inside that gift, we've got more stuff. We've got this beautiful mug. We've got some candies in there. It's beautiful. So that is, you will get this gift if you're a first-time guest, and you're going to get it at the tent on your way out. Also, if you're a second-time guest, we've got a gift for you, too. I've got a gift card here to Starbucks. Who likes Starbucks? So if you're a second-time guest as well, we'd love to connect with you. Stop by the Welcome Tent on the way out. But also, make sure you get connected by plugging in and texting FLC Space Guest to 45888. Anthony, I'm going to pass this to you real quick. Um, thank you so much. And make sure you text FLC Space Guest to 45888. When you text that, make sure you fill it out and write on there, how did you find out about us? Did Anthony invite you? Did Pastor invite you? Did you drive by our billboard on 192? Did you get a postcard in the mail, one of the 10,000 that we sent out this past month? Let us know, how did you find out about us? We wanna know because we wanna connect with more people, right? We wanna bring more people to church. So with that, talking about connection, let's take a few moments and connect with each other, talk to each other, someone maybe you haven't seen before, say hello, give them a big hug, and I'm gonna to talk to social media family. Hi, our social media family, hi YouTubers. Hope you are doing great. I wanna make sure you guys like, subscribe, all the things on our YouTube channel. Stay connected, stay plugged in. You know, share this with a friend. You, you're here attending virtually. Encourage someone else to join you virtually. Or if you're in person, you know what to do. I say it every time I come up here. I challenge you, if you're sitting there on your couch right now, come on in. If you are a local, come on in here. I've got a seat for you. We are expecting you. We'd love to have you in person. Hello, you'd get that sweet gift, right? So make sure you guys get plugged in, stay plugged in. And we have our podcast every Wednesday on our YouTube channel. So. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, I'm excited to be up here today, um, and I feel like I've missed you guys a little bit. So um, we've had the conference, we've had growth track, and we're gearing up for next week. Who's coming next week? That's good, that's good. Bill Weiss is coming next week. Y'all are excited. I love it, I love it, I love it. So make sure if you haven't gotten um, the invites, there got invites um, on your way out, up at Next Steps. But along with that, I wanna encourage you to continue just being faithful and, and sharing, sharing about our church to others, right? So I wanna take a few moments to talk about our tithes and offering. So here at Freedom Life Church, um, you can give in several ways. They're gonna pop up in the screen behind me in a moment, but you can give in person, you can give online, and you can give, if you give in person, you can actually turn it in at the giving stations on your way out. You can drop it in there. And I just want to encourage you guys that, um, you know, one thing that I was studying out, I was studying a message uh, uh, for our nugget, but I was like, hey, I'm going to share it now for you guys. So one of the words that I was, I was thinking about yesterday, I was, I was praying about it, and, um, is faithfulness. Faithfulness, right? So when we think about faithfulness, we can think about, right, what is it? It, it? A lot of times refers to our relationships, right? Our faithfulness to our spouse, to our friends, right? But what is the most important relationship we have? with God, right? Our most important relationship is with God, right? So that's the one we should be the most faithful to, right? We should be, well, obviously we're faithful to the people next to us, whether that's our spouse, our friends, everything, but our most important faithfulness is to God, right? And um, and I and I, I was reminded, I was like, let me look up some scriptures on this. So Matthew, I think it's, and I had it on my phone, Matthew 25, 21, it talks about faithfulness, right? It talks about the message of the talents, right? And did you know Matthew 25, 21 and Matthew 25, 23 are the same exact scripture? And you know what it says? It says the, sir, the, the master said to the, sir, said to the person with the talents, you have been good. You are good and what? Faithful servant, right? And like I was thinking about it, it's like how, how is it important that he actually said it twice? Like you read it, you read something else, and then you read the next scripture. It's like, 
Okay, when someone says something once, it's like, okay, you may forget it, you know, hey, maybe it was like off the cuff or something. But when someone is saying it twice, and Jesus is saying it twice, okay, I got to pay attention. That's going to be on the test. You know what I mean? Like for those of us that are in FBC, if the pastor says it twice, hey, I'm putting a little star next to it, right? So I encourage you, hey, that's that's something that we got to we got to keep thinking about. Okay, God asked us to be we he he want we want him to say good and faithful servants, right? So I want to encourage you, where is your faithfulness? Where is your faithfulness today? How how is it demonstrated in your giving, right? Because that's what I'm talking about today. We're talking about, and it could be applied to many areas, right? Your faithfulness, how you treat others, how you talk to others, how you look at others, eyebrows and all that, right? But I want to encourage you, how is your tithing, how is your generosity reflecting that faithfulness that you have to God? Are you taking your tithe money and spending it on something else? Are you taking that money that maybe could help maybe someone in need, like someone at the homeless ministry, and you're going out and spending all this money? Now, I'm not saying God wants us to be, you know, prosperous. He wants He wants to bless us, and he blesses us abundantly. But I want to encourage you, look at your faithfulness. Take the next few days. Really think about, is your faithfulness aligned? Does it speak, does it speak to your faithfulness to God? in your giving, in your generosity. You know, maybe there's something that you come across, hey, you know, I don't really need this anymore. Who can I bless? That's what I think about, and I encourage you guys to do the same. Hey, I got this extra money, who can we bless? Hey, the church needs this. Hey, I know know they're working on this. This is the next project that they have working on. This is the next thing. We're wanting to get new carpet. We're wanting to do new things. Hey, maybe that's something that, that could be a demonstration of, again, your faithfulness. So I want to encourage you guys today, be faithful, be faithful. Um, God will bless you abundantly, right? He spoke about that. That's his promise to us, right? When we, when we, we, he blesses us much more than we can ever bless him, right? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's take a few moments and bow our heads of prayer. Um, Thank you, Father, so much for this time that we can be together, Father. Thank you for today. I ask you to bless the offering that is given today, Father. I ask you to bless every penny, down to the penny, that is given today, Father that we are faithful, Father. Bless bless all those that are giving, Father. Bless those that are giving to your house, Father. Bless them abundantly. Bless them, Father. Like only you can. You you promised us. You promised that you that you, you we are going to be faithful to you and we know that you will be faithful to us, right? You do not you do not forget about us. You have been faithful. You have you always are faithful. You always are faithful. And we are so grateful to be able to give today to you and to your house, Father. Again, we thank you for today and we ask you to bless today's service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to worship just for a few more moments before I get into the message. And I want us to go back into I Exalt Thee. Can we do that? I exalt Thee. And I exalt Thee. And I exalt Thee.
Lift up your voice to him one more time. And I exalt thee. And I exalt thee. And I exalt thee. Father. Father, we're so grateful that we have this place together in corporate worship, that we can magnify you and exalt you above all gods. You are the God above all gods. In fact, there's no other God besides you. All other gods are false gods. You are Adonai. You are the supreme God. You are Yahweh. You are the eternal God, the existing one. You are Yeshua, Jesus, our Savior. We worship you in this place. You are El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. You are our Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals us. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. You are Jehovah Shama, the Lord is here. You are Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord our righteousness. You are Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. We magnify you, our Jehovah God. You are Abba, you're our Father. And we are so grateful that this day we have you and that we can worship you. As we've sung already, may you increase and may we decrease. May you be seen, may you be exalted, and may you be worshipped. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Well, you guys can be seated. Men are so glad that you're here at church today. Man, what a great day to be in church. I mean, we could be anywhere. But you decided to be here. I'm so glad that you came, especially all of our guests that came for the first or second time in returning back. We just want to say welcome to you. We are thrilled that you're here today. And that we want your experience with us to be just a very welcoming one. We pray that it is for you. And if there's anything that you would need or we could do for you if it, that's within our ability, just let us know. Especially these guys that are running around in black shirts that has a one of these emblems on it. These guys are professionals. They are experts. They are so smart. I mean, tell you what. So make sure you get with them. My name is Greg. I'm the senior pastor along with my wife, Brandy. She's not here this morning. She's in a healing process of some things that got into her chest this past week, but she is recovering at home quickly. Amen. So uh, let's continue to believe God for her, for her recovery. Man, this past week, Pastor Brandy and I were in Jackson, Mississippi, and I want to tell you something. Uh, I thought I was from the South. I thought I understood the South. <laughs> I was in the South, but I want to tell you, I didn't find one mean person. I'm sure there's some mean ones there. I'm telling you what, man, I felt like a million bucks. I felt like a million bucks when I went to go rent my car. I felt like a million bucks when I went to go check into my hotel. And especially when I got to the church, I felt like a zillion bucks. I'm telling you, these guys know how to welcome you, treat you, love on you. And um, it, it was just quite wonderful. And then we flew back into the Atlanta airport, and I came back to reality. But, <laughs> but man, I tell you what, it was so fun being there in Jackson, Mississippi. We got to be at an Ignite Life Conference uh, with Pastor Joel Sims, and 
Uh, I'm sure he's not watching this today, but he's preaching on his own. But if he happened to stumble across this, man, these guys did a superb job just taking care of us. We went to a church conference where obviously we can learn some things about just how to do church better. But then at night, man, we got in there and we got in the spirit, worshiped God, and got in the prophetic flow, and it was just so powerful. And so uh, I just want to say thank you guys for sending us, whether you realize you did or not, you sent us to the conference, and I'm telling you, Pastor Brandy, are way better because we went. So I love going away like that, getting away for a few days and just getting empowered. I'm just excited about what God has in store for us. I really believe that was a timely conference for, for us to be a part of. So excited about today. We are on our uh, series called The Unseen. We're on number two of that. And uh, like we started off last week, there are two realms that are existing at the same time. There's this seen realm that obviously you can look around, you're, you're in this realm, you're looking at it. But the unseen realm is actually operating at the same time as this one is. You just can't see it. It's called unseen, but it's just as real. And I want to say it this way, it's even more real than what you can see. The Bible says that which is seen is temporary, but that which is unseen is eternal. So uh, this unseen world was actually, I mean, the seen world was created out of the unseen world. So when God rose up into that realm of eternity and that unseen realm to us, uh, he spoke this seen world into existence thousands of years ago. And, uh, you know, that's, that unseen realm is where it's the spirit realm. It's where God, it's his home, it's his realm, it's where angels uh, the saints that have gone before that are in heaven, heaven, that's the realm of God. But as well, that spirit world, that unseen world has also Satan in it and his demonic hordes and a place, a literal place called hell where the lost, even that are lost eternally are there. These, these worlds are happening at the same time. But then as a human, you actually have these two worlds operating in you. What you can see out here uh, in your body, however your body looks today, whatever you're wearing, however your hair, you know, whatever your hair is doing today, uh, whatever your skin's doing today, whatever's going on in your body right now, this is the seen realm. But then there's something happening on the inside. It's called the unseen. It's your spirit. And your spirit is eternal. This body right now is temporary. It's mortal. Uh, you cut it, it bleeds. If you cut it bad enough, it will no longer exist. But one day, the Bible says that this mortal will take on immortality. That one day, this body is going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Praise God. But we've got a spirit on the inside of us. It's the real us. It's eternal. And that spirit, man, for every one of us in this room, that spirit, man, is either saved or born again or has the life of God in it. It's alive to God. Or your spirit is lost. Your spirit is dead. The Bible says dead in your sins separated from God. So in this room, all of us are humans, but we're not just human. We're, we're superhuman, if you can say it that way. We're not just natural. We're, we're supernatural because we've got, we've got the realm of the Spirit operating in us at the same time as the realm of the natural, okay? And so the most important thing is not what you see with your eyes about you. The most important thing even though you should take care of your teeth, it's not your teeth. <laughs> but please take care of your teeth for our benefit that's around you. I mean, wow. I mean, I'm talking about take care of your teeth. Brush your teeth, floss, use breath mints, mouthwash. It will make those in the scene realm have a ple more pleasurable experience being around you. Take care of your body. Bathe, washed. It's so terrible that in society now, they have to tell us to wash our hands. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean you, you go somewhere, please wash your I'm like, okay, I know that. But some people don't, you know. I, I don't know how many bathrooms I've gone to, and I've watched people go out and I go, I'm staying away from that guy, man. Do not shake his hand. I want to put a warning out. Warning. But the most important thing is not the natural. The most important thing is what's happening inside of you. Do you have the very life of God? Are you clean on the inside? The, the, Jesus said to the, to the Pharisees and, 
and those religious leaders, he said, you're, you're cleaning the outside of the cup, but the inside is dirty. And so they were priding themselves that they were clean on the inside, looked good on the outside, had the best clothes. I was getting ready to try to use a term, and I think I would have freaked out my kids if I would have used it. So I just stopped right there. I was going to stay in my age bracket. And I'm not, it's, not, it's got to be right there at the spirit of the moment. I can't just say it like that now. But, you know, you, you, you can have nice clothes. You can, you can, you mean your hair can look incredible. I mean, you can get your body in the best shape of your life. You can look amazing, drive an amazing car, live in an amazing house, put amazing pictures out there on Instagram, and everybody can think you're amazing. But if the inside of you is dead, rotten, dirty, that's the real you. So in this series, what we've been talking about is, is, is really wanting to go even beyond ourselves and start looking at other people, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So again, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. If you're in Christ, you've got the life of God in you. If you're in Christ, your spirit, man, is clean and it's alive unto God. But if you're not in Christ, you're dead. If you're not in Christ, uh, it, it, you're, you're away from God and actually you're on the road, the Bible says, to hell. That's what we talked about last week. It's on that wide road. So, but the Bible really instructs us not to look at people after the flesh, but look at them after the spirit. So as we're dealing with people in life, we just can't see them for how they look or even how they're acting. Some people can be really nice and they can be just putting it on. Some people are genuinely nice, but it doesn't mean just because they're nice that they're, they're alive unto God. There can be a lot of nice people that are lost. But you've got to look at people after the Spirit because who you are in the Spirit is who you really are. And, and it determines what road you're on and it determines what destination you'll have. So, you know, this series is about next, next week, 23 minutes in hell. Now, you're not going to have 23 minutes in hell while you're at church, but you're going to be told about it because, do we have that slide? Can I put that up? Um, but... Bill Weiss will be here, uh, and he's going to be sharing his testimony, and you don't want to miss it. It's going to be exciting, uh, but it's also going to be challenging, and may it challenge you as a believer, but invite, again, your lost friends, your unchurched friends, your uh, family members, et cetera, to get here and hear about it. You know, um, one of my favorite movies is Hacksaw Ridge. Has anybody ever watched that movie? It's like one of my favorites, if you've never watched it. What are you doing, man? You should be, you should, I mean, you need to watch movies. If you're going to watch movies, don't watch movies that poop all over you. Watch movies that will do something for you. They're getting fewer and farther in between than ever before uh, because most movies are wanting you to be programmed to be a woke individual and change your way of thinking about life. But this Hacksaw Ridge, I love this movie because it's, it's, it's a, uh, let me get his name right. It, it's about a gentleman called Desmond Dolls. Thank you. Gosh, I have it in here somewhere. Uh, and Des, there's right there in bold right. I can't see it. So he was this American pacifist uh, combat medic. Now, I'm not in agreement with his beliefs because I see it differently than what he did. But he had some beliefs about weapons and about killing anyone. And so, but he felt like he was supposed to serve in the military back in World War II as a medic. And of course, if you, uh, if you know the story, he, he took, I mean, a lot, I want to say persecution for his beliefs. The military tried to get him ousted, but he was able to be able to stay there because of the testimony of his father and different things. But then he served in the military. And then it, it, in, uh, there in one of the battles in, uh, let me get this right, uh, in, I, I want to say it right, the Battle of Okinawa. There we go. He was, it's a famous battle, obviously, but he saved, I can't remember how many people he saved, but if, how much? 80-some? 84. 84. 
84 people. And he, he, he would go get them, and he would carry these injured people off to, to the edge of the cliff where they would release him down. And, and he would say this, Lord, help me get one more. Help me get one more. And it looked like he was totally uh, exhausted, like how could he even get one more? And he'd get another one. And he'd bring it back to the edge. And then he'd go get it. And he said, Lord, help me just get one more. And he did that over and over again that he saved 84 people that day and rescued them in the midst of something where most of those guys probably, if not all of them, would have died. And if somebody would do that, just in the natural, saving somebody's life, how much more should we take on that mentality as believers? Lord, help me just win one more. Help me rescue one more. Amen. And I want you to look at this scripture, and it's found in Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 11. And it's in the Passion Translation. It says, go and rescue the perishing. People that are lost, they're perishing. People that do not know Christ are on the wide road, and their destination is Hell. Everybody look up here. Their destination, guys, is eternal hell. So whether that be your dad, your mom, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, your nephew, your niece, your friend, your neighbor, your co-worker, or just a stranger out there that's working at some place, if they have not made their allegiance to Christ and believed upon him, their destiny is hell. Now, God's not just sending all these people to hell because he's just an evil God. They're already on their way to hell because of what Adam did. Adam brought sin into the world. Every one of us are born into sin, and we need a Savior. That's why Jesus came. But if we don't rescue them, they're going to go to hell. It says, go and rescue the perishing. Be their Savior. Why would you stand back and watch them stagger to their death? Why would you say, but it's none of my business. The one who knows you completely and judges your every motive is also the keeper of souls and not just yours. He sees through your excuses and he holds you responsible for failing to help those whose lives are threatened. Wow. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. That's an old hymn. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. <laughs> that was too high. Jesus will save. He will save. But you've got to go rescue them. He's already done his part. He already came to the earth. He already lived, and he died, and he was buried, and he rose again, and he ascended, and he sat down. And so now it's our job to go get them. So today's title is called Rescue the Perishing. And, I, and I, you know, we have this concept in the Scriptures. It's called the Golden Rule. It says, do unto others as you'd have them do unto yourself, right? Y'all still here? Y'all staring at me like I got three eyeballs. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, right? There's that golden rule. Well, I want to read it for a second, but then I want to read the scriptures after it. Matthew 7, 12 says, Do to others whatever you'd like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. You can enter, notice here the next scripture, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, the gate is wide. For the many who choose that way, but the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few will ever find it. Listen, we use the golden rule when we teach our kids how to treat one another. You do to them as you want them to do to you. And we should. And we should have that motto that Jesus gave us, that we should treat one another like we would like to be treated. But it's funny how we stop there at that verse and we don't go to the next verses. When you read your Bible, you need to read it, not just hand cherry-picking a verse out. Read the context. See what the context is about. See what the chapter is about. See what the book is about. Read it in context. In the context, Jesus says, do unto others as you'd have them to do unto you. And then he starts talking about people that are on the wide road to hell. Now, if you were on the wide road to hell... You might have been at one time in your life, and maybe you're not right now. You're not, but if you were on the wide road to hell, and you know what you know right now, 
Would you want somebody to reach you? And if you say no, I really highly doubt that you're saved. Why wouldn't you want somebody to go, hello, you're on the wrong road. And if you don't get off this road, you're going to go, there's going to be destruction. Now, I know there's ways that you can do that, that is maybe not all up in their face about hell all the time, but at the same time, you've got to understand and have revelation of where people are going so it will put a fire in you to begin to start thinking about their lost condition. So don't just apply the golden rule to the seen realm. Apply the golden rule, rule to the unseen realm. That we begin to start thinking about those that are on their way to hell and what are we going to do to rescue them. Again, Proverbs 24 verse 11 says, re, this is the message Bible, rescue the perishing. Don't hesitate to step in and help. If you say, hey, that's none of my business, will that get you off the hook? Someone is watching you closely, you know. Someone not impressed with your weak excuses. I want this church to be a church that has a culture of inviting people, reaching people, sharing the gospel with people. We should be an evangelistic church. Now, I believe when we gather, obviously, we're worshiping God. We're coming here in the presence of God as believers and we're going to be fed the Word of God, and we're going to be equipped for life, and the Holy Spirit's going to minister. But as well, God wants you thinking about the lost. Because one day, all of us will stand before Jesus. If you're born again, you'll stand at the, at, at the judgment seat of Christ. How many, how many if I'm, and I want everyone... To listen closely so that I don't have to repeat this. Ready? How many are really born again believers in this room? If you are, lift your hand really high. If you're not, that means your hand is down. All right, put them down. Everyone that lifted your hand up, then you will stand before Jesus by yourself at the judgment seat of Christ. There's a day coming that you will stand, just you and Jesus. And you'll have to give an account for your life. You'll have to give an account. When an, when an accountant looks at books, they're, they're bringing you to a, your accounts, you know, together to see if everything's all right. And if you're doing things correctly, right? When you're making sure things are, are up and, and where they need to be. When, when you come before Jesus, there's going to be an accounting, and he's going to go through your books, or he's going to go through the book that he wrote about you, and he's going to see, did you follow my plan? But also, you're going to be responsible for the people that you were supposed to impact for Jesus, and whether you were on the rescue mission or not. This is not an option. The very first thing that Jesus told his disciples, when he called them, remember Peter? He said, Peter, leave your nets and come follow me. And what? I will make you a fisher of men. The very first instruction that Jesus gave Peter is that if you follow me, I'm going to make you. I'm going to train you to be a disciple. I'm going to train you then to, to mentor people. But the first thing is you got to fish for them. You need to be thinking, I need to be thinking daily about people who do not know Jesus and what am I doing about it? Your life is not about you just having your best life now. Now don't get me wrong, God wants you to be blessed and we teach that. He's a good God, he's a prosperous God, but your existence is not just to see how great of a life you can have and how comfortable you can be. Your existence is to be able to be equipped so that you can bring as many people possible with you to heaven. You're on the rescue team. Okay? Everybody say, no excuses. Look at your neighbor and say, quit giving God your excuses. Okay. All right, that's enough. Quit yelling at people. All right, stop. 
So let me give you the rescue plan. You ready? These are really simple things. I would encourage you out on the back of the chairs uh, there in, uh, in front of you or if you're on the front row behind you, there are notes that you can take. You can take notes. Or you can do it on your phone. Or you can take a picture of the screen. But I might ask you, if I know you, give me one of my points if I see you next Sunday. Because it does you no good just to sit in service and say amen to me, but you don't do what's being said. Because the scripture you get or the words you get is just only deceiving. You're just deceiving yourself. Thinking I was good coming to church, but I didn't do it. It's the doer of the word that's blessed. Now, hearing is important, because how can you do if you don't hear? So hearing is the step, but then you've got to welcome it, and you've got to receive it, and then you've got to look back at it so that you can do it. So even if you're not a, de- I'm a detailed note taker in church, I'm sitting there. If I'm not preaching, I'm on my laptop, not my laptop, but my, my uh, iPad up here, and I'm probably bothering everybody around me for my clicking noises, but I'm, I'm clicking on my thing. I'm, I'm taking notes. That's just how I am. You might not be that way, all right? Maybe that's not how you learn, but at least take down some main points, like write three things down. <laughs> Everybody can do that in this room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just need a little help, maybe from the front row or something. If you're on the front row, you're not saying amen. I am kicking you off the front row. Don't you be in the front. Just sit there and stare at me. You better amen. That front row seat comes with the price. And the second row. (laughs) All right. Come on. I'm going to give you the rescue plan. Y'all ready for the rescue plan? Because if you're on the rescue team, you're going to have to have a plan. All right, ready? Number one, you've got to take personal responsibility. You have to take personal responsibility. If you don't take personal responsibility, you won't reach people for Jesus. You'll, you'll say, that's somebody else's job. That's the preacher's job. That's so-and-so's job. It's not my job. Mark 16, 15 is the scripture. And Jesus said to his followers, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. (laughs) How can you get away from that? This is the commission that he didn't just give to the 12 disciples. This is the commission that he gave to all of his disciples. All right, let me ask you a question. Everybody needs to pay attention. I'm looking around. If, I have, if you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus, lift your hand really high up in the air right now if you're a disciple. I'm looking. Okay, put your hands down. If you're a disciple of Jesus, then this is for you. This is his instruction A disciple is one who's disciplined or one that is taught, one that's mentored, one that follows. You can't be a a follower of Jesus if you don't follow Jesus. I know that's a heavy revy. But following Jesus means you follow him, his instructions, and what he's leading you to do, obviously. So here's our instructions. Go. Everybody say go. Now don't go right now. Some of you are getting ready to get up and go. Do not go right now. (laughs) Step back down. But go everywhere. In other words, go into your realm of influence. Go where you work. Go where you shop. Go where you play. Go, go. Not just kind of occupy space and breathe air and be a carbon print on the earth. No, go with intention. To tell the good news. Pretty simple instruction. The good news is, hey, you don't have to die and go to hell. You actually can spend eternity with a wonderful, awesome God, the Heavenly Father and Jesus and 
the angels and the Holy Spirit. You, you, can, you can have a home in heaven. Your life can be changed. You can actually have true peace on the inside of you and, and find true joy. Your life can be changed. This is good news, guys. We have the responsibility to fulfill this great commission. Again, our, our excuses at the judgment seat will not exempt us. Jesus won't say, hey, you got me there. Hey, yeah, that's a good one. Never heard that one before. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Again, Proverbs 24, 12 says, He sees through your excuses and holds you responsible for failing to help those whose lives are threatened. You know, we were coming back from a trip this past week, and when we got into the airport, because, of course, you know, we're preaching along this line, and Pastor Brandy's been talking to me and says, Honey, I want to I be more intentional about reaching people. And so, you know, we're, we're flying, and I have a tendency when I fly, I don't want to talk to anybody. I, that's, my, that's my normal self. I, I, my wife, she's, she, it's so, we're so weird, both of us. We're just, you know, there, there, I have a place in my life where I'm very, you know, talkative and friendly and people-oriented. Then I have a place in my life where I'm very introverted in. When I get in with strangers, I'm very introverted. And so I'm, when I'm with people that I don't know, sitting on a plane with people that I don't know, I'm, I'm very introverted. And so I have to make myself step out of that. It doesn't come normal. My wife is like, when she gets around people she doesn't know, she wants them to feel comfortable. So she, she, she has like this, feels like a mandate to make everybody feel comfortable around her. So she's going she's gonna to make sure those people that are sitting near us feel comfortable as best as she can by talking to them, engaging them. So there's this one guy she began to engage, and his name is Preston. I don't even know if Preston, you might be here today. I don't know. But she began to start taking the responsibility and just engaging him because she thought, Lord, how can I reach him? I'll tell you more about that in just a second. The next step is here. Step number two is that you've got to make a connection with them. You've got to make a connection. You take the responsibility, but then you've got to make that connection. This guy named Preston was beside of us waiting in line. He had this book bag, and his book bag was kind of ripped. And so... Uh, my wife said something about it in a way that was funny that he engaged her and she was like, hey, you've gotten a lot of use out of that bag or something. And he's, um, he's, he, he was in the military. Now he does contract work in Kuwait. And uh, so we began to talk and he says, I just don't want to get rid of this bag. It's been a great bag. And it's kind of like he, I, and then we started talking to him about how uh, some of our kids are that way. They they just are sentimental about certain things, and, and it's just hard for them to let go of something. And so we just engaged, and we were making a connection. So sometimes what happens with people is they hear this, and they think they automatically need to start pounding the Bible on top of their head. Or like, you're going to go to hell. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> and they're like, whoa. <laughs> Calm down for a minute. Make a connection. Start engaging them. Listen to this, Luke 15, 1. It says, tax collectors and other notorious sinners. Everybody say notorious. notorious. Now, there's one thing to be a sinner, and there's another thing to be a notorious sinner. <laughs> now, some of you guys in here, you were once sinners. Some of you guys were notorious sinners. And I'm not looking at anybody right now. I'm not looking at anybody in this room. There's some notorious, I mean, you sinned and you sinned well. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you maximize that part of your life. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't constructive. It was quite destructive. But at the same time, you lived it. You know, they were notorious sinners. But notice that it says here that they often came to listen to Jesus teach. That just, to me, that just blows me away that notorious sinners would even want to come where Jesus was at. So Jesus' approach, Jesus... Obviously, you know Jesus always spoke the truth. But somehow his approach welcomed them. There's a way that you can reach sinners, people that don't know God, that you can speak the truth, yet you can still provide a welcoming atmosphere for them. Notice here that this made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. Oh, my goodness. When's the last time you ate with a sinner? When's the last time you, 
and I'm not talking about you guys who are going clubbing with him. This is not what I'm talking about. If you're out there going clubbing with him, smoking with him, drinking with him, this is not what I'm talking about. Jesus didn't go drinking with him, smoking with him, partying with him. No, no, they came where he was. Jesus wasn't throwing some, you know, keg party over here. Jesus was meeting with people, eating with them, talking to them about the things of God. But he, 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 had an, he had some type of an inviting presence. It may be that you start thinking about, hey, maybe how can I fix dinner and invite my neighbor over for dinner? Listen, I don't know too many people that say I won't take a good steak. If you can fix a good steak... Bless your neighbor with some really good steak and maybe just get to know them. Isn't that convicting already? I mean, because we're so, I mean, I mean, I, when I go home, I'm just, I'm home. Because I'm around people all the time, so when I go home, I'm home. But there's people around me that need Jesus. Take opportunities at Christmas time and different times to give gifts to your neighbors. Just, you know, Order something, give it to them with something in it. You know, spend a little money on the neighbors around you just to reach their way. All right? Um, Jesus didn't sin with them to reach them. He didn't have to be like them to influence them. He was himself, but he was able to engage. When, when we were in that line waiting to get on the plane, Pastor Brandy and I began to engage with this, with this guy and just talk to him about normal things in life. And then here's, here's the third thing. Share your testimony. Some of you guys have got pretty good testimony. Some of you guys out there, you, you know what God did in your life. You know how God came in and changed you. Every one of us have a testimony. Every one of us do. And every one of us can share that. People like knowing personal things about you. Did you know that? Every time I share personal things up here, everybody starts perking up. I mean, you could be falling asleep. I'm not looking at anybody right now, but you all be falling asleep. Is anybody falling asleep up there in the balcony in the back corner? I'm looking, I'm looking. Wake them up, wake them up. I give you permission to wake up people if they're sleeping beside of you. <laughs> in a nice way, in a nice way. Don't hit them, don't smack them. Don't push them off the chair. Just kind of go, woo, glory to God, right in their ear. <laughs> that, you said, that was good, man. You missed it. <laughs> Share your testimony, right? Listen to this, Luke 8. But the man from whom the demons had gone out kept coming and praying that he might accompany him and be with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and recount the story of how many, how many and great things God has done for you. And the man departed proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. This guy was a guy that had many demons. He had over a thousand demons. He got delivered. He was this loony. He was this crazy guy. He was in the tombs. He was in the graveyard. He was cutting himself. He had supernatural strength. He was breaking chains. He had so many demons in him. But when Jesus came into his life, he cast those demons out. The guy was radically changed. He got so delivered, he wanted to be around Jesus and be with his disciples. And Jesus said, it would be better that you go back home and tell the testimony. Listen, guys, your testimony will only be as real as you tell it. The more you tell it, the more real it will be. Some of you have lost your first love because you're not telling your testimony. It's not as exciting. Your Christianity is not as exciting because you don't talk about it. Listen, my dad, who died this past year, went to heaven at 98. When he told his testimony, even up until the last year that he lived, tears would stream down his face. You want to know why? Because he told me, he told us as a family, he said, there are two things that... that that actually told my nephew this, but I've heard him say it different times. But at one particular time, uh, he told Pastor Chad this. He said, uh, when I wake up in the morning, one of the first things I say, Lord, thank you so much that you saved me. He thanks God every day when he wakes up that God had mercy on him, that he's not in hell, and that he's saved and he's born again. That should be something you're thanking and praising God about 
every day throughout the day. And then number two, he says, I tell my testimony all the time. And he did. You give my dad alone a few moments with somebody, he tried to get you saved in this church. I mean, I, there's times when my mom would say, Paul, I think they're saved already. <laughs> he goes, I know, I know. but, And he would just share his testimony. Tell what Jesus has done for you. No one can take that away from you. It is your testimony. It is what God has done for you. It is how you've experienced him. You have a realm of influence to tell your story. And let me give you another one. Share the good news. When's the last time you actually told people what the good news is and shared it with them? When's the last time you just shared with them the good news? It's really simple. Romans 10, 13 says this, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him unless they believe in him? How can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? How can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell without being sent? This is what the scriptures say. How beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news. You might have naturally ugly feet. But if you're one that preaches the gospel, you've got beautiful feet. Come on. These natural feet are temporary. I mean, I got monkey feet. I'm telling you, what, I, got, I got fingers as toes, man. I could probably paint with my feet. I could probably drive with my feet. I mean, it's not that bad, but you know, I think my feet are fine until my family tells me, you got, you got ugly feet, Dad. I'm like, wow, thanks for the encouragement. My wife began to start sharing the, the gospel with, with Preston. We go down, and we're getting off the plane, and she was telling me on the plane. She goes, you need a witness to him. And I said, okay, I mean, I, I will. I mean, if that's, I'm, 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 listening, I'm listening to the Lord. And I could tell she was the one that was, God was moving on. I said, well, it's not, I, she tries to hand it off to me. I don't know how many times she's done that. <laughs> she's not here to defend herself, but she would tell me that's true. And I said, I said, well, we'll see what happens. I said, you know, I said, I'm going to work on my, my, my sermon because I had been at a conference. I got to get my sermon. My sermon time was plain time. So, I mean, I've already had, knew what I was, which way we were going. I just needed to write it. And so uh, I go, well, let's just see what happens here, honey. We'll just follow the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm trying to whisper with Preston sitting right beside of us. <laughs> well, Preston ends up putting his head, you know, he, he was sleepy. He'd, he'd, he'd come from Kuwait, so he, he was exhausted. He fell asleep, just conked out. So I said, you know, it's, we still got to go down to the baggage claim. Let's just see what happens. So we get off the plane. There he is. He's like, he went out before us, but all of a sudden he's sitting there trying to get a hold of somebody on the phone. And then we, 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 then we lost him again. We went to the baggage claim. He said, well, I went to the bathroom. My wife went to the bathroom. You know how that all goes. If you've been out to Orlando Airport, you know how the baggage claim is. It can get really crazy when all the flights come in. We go down there. We stand. And she looks over, and there's Preston right beside of her. It's like going, and then she goes, you're right here. And then she just went right in. So then I just went getting the bags, and she began to start talking to him about his relationship with Jesus and about where he is and what he believes. And, and she went on with that and began to share what was necessary and even gave him some, some things he could look at online from Jimmy Evans about the, the last days and, and different things that she said, this will just help you maybe realize where we are in the time frame of the earth. And, and he was very open. Now, we didn't lead him to the Lord at the moment. But he was very open, and even be, as we were driving off, he was uh, there again, right where we were at. It's like he kept peering everywhere, and he, and he held up his phone, showing her that he was looking it up online. He was already doing it. It was, it was really precious. It really was. It was, just, it was so neat. But here's the gospel message. You ready? Number one, we're all sinners and need a Savior. It's pretty simple, guys. We're all sinners, and we need a Savior. Number two, Jesus came and took our place on the cross so that we don't have to pay for our sins in hell. He took our place. He paid the price. Number three, I'm going to ask you guys this. I'm going to ask Tina this when we get done, if she has this down. Jesus rose from the grave 
on the third day so we have a new resurrected life in him. That's part of the gospel. Jesus is alive, and now we're alive. But then number four, we must repent of our sins, give our full allegiance to Jesus, and believe on him to save us. That's the gospel, guys. It's that simple. You don't have to have a thousand scriptures. Now, it's good that you study the Bible and know more about it, but you don't, you don't have to have 10,000 scriptures to start sharing the gospel with somebody. Here's my last point. Ready? Invite them to church. I want this church to have a culture that's inviting. I want this to be an invite type of church. Now, we, we do it, but it, we really need to step it up, guys. I want to tell you this. We, all of us who are here, part of the core of this church, we got to step it up. you got to be looking for opportunities all the time to be inviting people, especially on days like we're getting ready to have coming up. Okay? In Luke 14, 22, then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges. I like that. Highways, that's where everybody's at. Hedges, where, where people are hiding out. <laughs> highways and hedges. And urge and constrain them to yield, come in, so that my house may be filled. Now, obviously, God wants the house of heaven filled, but he also wants his church filled. You don't think God's about filling the house? He is. In the early church, the very first day of the church, 3,000 people got saved. The next big day, they had 5,000, and then it began to be numbers too big for us to count. They didn't have the mechanism to count how many people were coming in. God wants his church to expand. God wants this harvest to be reaped, but it won't be reaped if we don't get, on, get in the rescue team and start rescuing people. Jesus, there are times because of places like different Muslim areas where Jesus is appearing to people and they might not be able to have as many laborers because of how things are and people are praying and God's appearing to people. But listen, God is expecting every one of us to be laborers in the harvest field. He wants this house filled. And let me close with this story. Some years back, we were doing a big day like we're doing here this Sunday, coming Sunday. And, you know, we, we gave the vision, just like I did. I'm getting ready to tell you guys to do. Take, get three people. I'll go ahead and tell it now. You need to get three people. I think the ushers, did they pass them out or are you going to pass them out? They're going to pass them out. All right, so we were supposed to have them on the chairs. That didn't happen, so they're going to be passed out at the doors. So every person in this room, I want to give you the challenge to get three people that are unchurched, that, that are, you know they're lost, or maybe you know they're backslidden, or you're not sure where they are, but you know they don't go to church. And they're unchurched, or they're, not, they're non-church. They, just, they, don't, they, don't wanna, they don't go to any church. I'm not saying they don't want to. They, maybe they would if they invite. But I want you to get th- and put their names down on that paper or on that Seek and Save card. Pray for them this week. We start, we start prayer every morning this coming week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on our prayer call. So you can go online. You can see that number. Get all of that. But we're going to be praying at 7 a.m. for at least 30 minutes for this upcoming week, all right? Um, but I want you to write those three people's names down and then invite them. The least thing I want you to do, the least, the very least thing is pray and invite them to come with you next Sunday. Next Sunday, we have a 9 o'clock, a 10.30, and a 12. Say that out loud. 9 o'clock, 10.30, 12. If you show up at 11, we're just going to believe that you're early for the 12 o'clock. All right? But I want to challenge you to pray for them. Your heart will draw towards the people you pray for. If you want to have a heart for people, pray for people. If you're having a hard time with somebody, make them a prayer project. If, if you're having a hard time with your neighbor or somebody at work, begin to pray for them. We, we cast this vision years ago on one of our big days, and so I, I went to this place called Herbal Life. Anybody heard of Herbal Life? They have one of these locations. So I was doing Herbal Life at the time. And um, so some people in our church that went to our church at that time had an Herbal Life place, and so I went in there that morning uh, just to support their business, their local business, and to have an Herbal Life shake for breakfast. Well, there's a girl in there that was working, 
And so, you know, I had my invite with me, and I got introduced to her. Her name was Nani, and Nani's from Puerto Rico. And um, Nani's English uh, was not the greatest, but she, she, we could communicate, and she was able to understand what I'm saying. I could understand what she was saying, but she's just working on her English, and she was working there in the business. And I just started engaging in conversation. And, you know, as we were talking, I said, hey, would you want to be my friend this coming Sunday and come to church uh, and be my, be my guest this coming Sunday? And she's like, sure. And then the people that owned the shop looked at me like, we've been trying to get her to come to church for like a year, and then now you come in here and she says yes. I said, you just got to know how to do it. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I just said to them, you just, you know, you, you probably broke her down all these years, and I just came in, and she finally said yes, you know. But I got the privilege of asking her, and she said yes, she came. And that Sunday, she made a decision for Jesus, okay? But that's not the end of the story. She made a decision for Jesus, and then she started coming to church. Then she got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then she started serving on the teams and started getting involved in church, and she became one of our core people. And, and herself began to start inviting others to church. And then she ended up moving to Puerto Rico. Now she does herbal life there, and she's there, and we, I see her by way of Instagram every so often. Or uh, She hasn't been back. I haven't seen her in, in a while back here in this parts. But, you know, if Nani, if you happen to be watching, we want you to know we love you, and we are so proud of you. If you are watching, I don't know if you're watching. But I mean, Nani just became like one of my daughters here in, in church, one of my spiritual daughters. Uh, and she just, she just bought into the vision. She just, she just went all for it in God. And God was able to so radically change her life. There are many Nannies out there. There are many other people out there, who, whatever their name is, and they're waiting for you to pray for them. They're waiting for you to invite them. They don't even know it. They don't even know that they need you but they need you. So I want to put that out there again. Would you join me on this challenge? Would you get three people that you will write their names down and pray for them? I, I really believe this to be true. I really believe this to be true. If you're a part of my church and you're a member and you're part of my core, I believe that the Jesus will bring this up to you on the judgments. I really do. I believe he'll be a judgment. And he'll say, what did you do with the challenge that the pastor gave you? So I was just a pastor. If you just look at me after the flesh and see me just as Greg giving you instructions, you're missing it. My name is Greg, and I have flesh and blood. But I am anointed to be the pastor of this house with a vision for this house. And the Holy Spirit does speak to me about this house. So when I give instructions from the Holy Spirit to the house and it's disregarded, you're disregarding Jesus. Now, if you're not a member here, if this is not your house, hey, I'm not, this is, I'm not, believe me, I am not forcing you to do anything. <laughs> but if you're a member, you're a part of this house, this should be our culture, guys. You should be looking forward to these days. When are we going to have another day? When can I get my friends here? When, when can we think about that? I mean, we should be thinking about that all the time. And I know there's certain maybe messages or series that's not really for them. I understand that. And, and I know there's probably better times to invite people. But I'll tell you, if there's ever been a time to invite somebody, it would be for this coming Sunday. We're, we're going to fly people in. We're going to put them up in a nice hotel. We're going to treat them really nice. When I bring guests into this church, we take care of them. They're gonna leave here with a wonderful love offering, better than what you give. I always add more because we believe in the gifts that God brings us. So I'm intentional about it, but when I bring them in, it's because I know they have something for our church. So I'm saying this to you again, please take hold of this. If you're a member, if you're a core person, take hold of this and let's do this together, why? because God wants Osceola County to be saved. God wants Florida to be saved. God's called us to help rescue the perishing. We must take that personal responsibility. 
So if you say, Pastor, maybe you, you did this last week. Well, I want you to do it again if you did it last week. You say, Pastor, I'm on board with you. I'm getting three people. I'm praying for them, and I'm going to invite them, whether that be through a text invite or by handing them an invite. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to join in with you. If that's you, stand up right now. Stand up right where you are. If that's you, stand up. Lift up one or two hands up to the Lord right now. Father, I pray for everyone standing. I'm asking you to lead them supernaturally to the right people. You know who the ones are supposed to be that they're to pray for. You know the ones that they're supposed to personally invite and reach out to. Father, direct them, lead them, guide them. Anoint them to pray and anoint them to say. Anoint them to share their testimony, to share their faith, to engage them, to love on them, to minister to them, and ultimately to invite them in. Father, I commission them now. It says, how can, they, how can they go unless they're sent? I send them. I commission them now. I commission them to go and rescue the perishing and care for the dying, to go and be disciples of the Lord Jesus and make disciples of the Lord Jesus. And Father, I thank you for your grace and your anointing and your authority upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, can we praise God one more time? Come on. This place is going to be packed next week with people that are hungry for God, needing God. You can have a seat real quick. Don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Give me two more minutes. If you go to the movies, you sit there for three hours. Give me just two more minutes. Maybe three. Just give me three more minutes. Bow your heads real quick. Close your eyes. If you're in this room right now and you do not have an authentic, personal, real relationship with Jesus, I'm talking about where you've come into a revelation that you were a sinner and needed a Savior. You acknowledge the fact that your sins put Jesus to the cross. You've repented of those sins and you gave your allegiance over to Jesus. And you received by faith his mercy and his grace to save you. And that you were born again. You, you know, you, if, if you've never had that, if you've never had that today, I want you to have it. Or you might say, I've never, I, I've had that, but I've walked away from that. If you've walked away from it, God wants you to come back. So if you say, I've never had that authentic, real encounter with Jesus in that way. Or number two, I've, I've had it, but I've walked away from him and I need to come back today. If that's you, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. And I want to pray for you right there in your seat. Ready? One, two, three. If that's you, raise your hand right there, right where you're at. Raise it up and keep it up. Keep it up. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for every individual that's not sure of their salvation. Maybe they've walked away. I don't know. Lord, meet them right there in that seat. Father, draw them to you right now. Speak to them. Love on them. May they know you love them. May you know that Jesus is their answer. And he doesn't want them to go to hell. He wants to spend eternity in heaven with them. Reach them right now, Father. And the, the backslider, love on them. Bring them back in, Father. And I thank you for doing it. Every hand lifted up in the air. Let's all pray with them. And say this out loud. Jesus, here's my life. Here's my heart. I give it to you. Everything. I give you my allegiance. I repent of my sins and I choose you, Jesus, to be the Lord and leader of my life. I submit to you. Now I need you to save me, to change me, to restore me. And I'm asking for it. And I believe that I receive your mercy, your grace, your salvation, your restoration. Right now, I receive a new heart, a new start, and I thank you for it. And from this day forward, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to say welcome home, guys. Congratulations. But let me give you a next step. It's really important. 
If you prayed with me to either get born again, have that encounter with Jesus, or to come back, get out your phones and text, really simple, text God saved to 45888. Text FLC, sorry, FLC got saved, just like it is on the screen, to 45888. There'll come a link up on your phone. Hit that link and there'll be a quick form. Just fill that out for me. And if you'll give us a record that you, you know, made this decision, I can send you some stuff in the mail that's really going to help you in your decision because you need help, okay? We all need help after we do this. And then we'll also send you an email. Certain other things will come to you that will help you. But here's another next step you need to take. Come back next Sunday. Come back next Sunday. Get to know God better. You, you need, a, you need a, a group of believers that can be around you. Next Sunday is a great week to be here. Bring a friend with you, okay? If you just made a decision for Jesus, you bring a friend with you. Say, hey, I got my life changed last Sunday at church. Why don't you come with me and hear this guy, hear this encounter with hell. I don't know anything about it, but man, it sounds kind of freaky. I don't know. Come. You can tell people to come with you, all right? And then may, think about this. If you made a decision for Jesus today, Jesus said to believe and be baptized. Now, baptism is really important because it's a demonstration of what you did today in church. We're going to have it two weeks from today. Two weeks from today, water baptism, November the 5th, both services. You can go online, you can sign up there, or you can, uh, you know, just show up. It's easier if you sign up. We'll have a bag ready for you, but if you just show up, we'll, we'll get you all the stuff you need to get water baptized, okay? And don't forget about Life Group Equip for all those that want to lead a life group next Sunday after the last service, all right? Everybody say 9 o'clock, 10.30, 12 o'clock. That's next week's services, right? All right, give it up for Susie. She comes. All right, amen. Powerful message. Are y'all ready? Y'all got your plan in place, right? All right, another thing I want to mention that if, for those of you that are maybe wanting to serve, Growth Track is in a couple weeks, first of the first Sunday of the month. Make sure you register. And if you already went to Growth Track, come on, get, get to serving, get to serving. So there's a lot of ministries that you can be serving in, and God wants to use your gift to grow his kingdom, right? Amen? Remember, um, make sure you, if you are first-time guests, you stop by that welcome tent on your way out. We got water baptism coming up. Also this week in preparation for our guests, uh, we're gonna have prayer at 7 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. So make sure it's the same call that we do on Wednesdays. And if you don't have the information, check your email. And if you're not in the email, let us know. Um, so Bill Wee's three services. All right, I think I got it all. Let's pray and you guys have a great Sunday. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all that you've done, all that you've equipped us with today, Father, that we can take this, what you've given us today through Pastor Greg, and then we can put it into action, Father, to further your kingdom, to bring those lost souls saved like someone reached out to us. Let us be faithful. Let us be diligent. Let us be led by the Holy Spirit, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Want to give a shout out to Restore in the Lobby. If you want to connect with them, they got a fundraiser coming up. And prayer team, come on up. If you're wanting some extra prayer, the prayer team will be right up here. Thank you, prayer team. Have a blessed Sunday, y'all.